What is good everyone? For this installment of Photosynthesis, I'll be covering a variety of tips on working scenes in photography. And if you're not familiar with what Photosynthesis is, it's a series here where I can take any ideas, topics, questions, questions from you, really anything, kind of a catch-all, and I take them and turn them into a video. But let's get into this installment of Photosynthesis. And like I said, we'll be covering tips on working scenes in photography. And in my workshops and mentorships, this is one of the top things that photographers are always asking on ways to work scenes and, and tips on it. I'm gonna share as many tips as I can think of on how to work scenes, things I do, and things that I think will help you too. And it's not for every type of photo, of course. There's a lot of photos I take. There's a lot of photos that other photographers take that don't involve working scenes. They're more instinctual. They're more about the moment. You need to catch it so you don't have time to work the scene. There's some photographers that don't even really work scenes. They're just more about they feel it, they see it, and they take it, and they move on. But that's kind of just something that comes more natural, and that's more about your eyes. But when it comes to scenes that you can work, there is a lot of things you can do to improve how you work those scenes. But starting at number one, and I wrote a list here, I try to think of as many as I really could, but number one is don't overthink. I uh, really don't think that much at all. Now that is a very common thing that comes up when I'm working on mentorships and workshops is when people see something interesting or see a scene they want to work, they tend to overthink and then they miss taking anything really or anything interesting because it, it all goes by them. They get kind of blocked. So they see something interesting and now they're thinking, how can I make this more interesting? And of course you want to make the photo more interesting, but you don't want to just stop there and just get in your head and be analyzing and thinking. You want it to come more natural and more just uh, feeling it. So you want to try not to overthink or really think much at all because that tends to make photographers really not be able to think of anything then. They're thinking too much and then they miss really feeling it out. So that brings me to tip number two is you more want to just feel it out. And it comes partly comes with experience and you, you learn things to do, but you want it to come more natural. You want to, you know, work the scene, but have it come in a natural fluid way where you're not overthinking, you're not analyzing too much. Of course, you're making decisions, but it's more about looking around the scene and having it more come naturally when you click that shutter and when you feel it. And while you're feeling it out, you want to move and you want to move a lot. You don't want to go up. If you have a scene to work, you don't want to just stand in one spot and take a photo and then take another photo without moving. If you want to make a photo that's more interesting than you first saw and you really want to work it, you're going to need to work the scene. And that means moving a lot, moving down, moving up, moving right, moving left, moving, walking in. You know, a lot of times when you have scenes and there's multiple things going on and it, it's uncontrolled, those people are moving. So the, the scene and the frame is constantly changing. And so you want to, you have to really, you have to move with it too, so you can click the shutter at the right time and have the right angle there. So you need to really get in there and not only fill it out, but move with it and take the shot when you feel it. And while moving around and working that scene, you want to work angles too. And I actually covered this in a previous photosynthesis, but working angles is a great way to change the frame, change the photo, and change the perspective. You can take a kind of bland photo that might not be that interesting, and you can make it interesting just by changing angles. You can improve, you know, the composition, of course. You can you can completely change how it looks. Again, I cover this in depth in that photosynthesis on working angles. So watch that definitely. And also when you're out there moving and working the angles and really working the scene, you want to make the photo yours. And that's one it's also kind of a byproduct of really working the scene as you do tend to make it more your own. When you see a scene and you just take it straight on, you're just taking exactly what you saw. Anybody could have taken that. By really working the scene though, you want to make it your own. You might have a personal style. You might, you might have, you know, there's different things that we are attracted to on how we take photos and how we want it to look. But by really working that scene and trying to make it your own, you're going to improve how you work that scene and the photo you make too. And part of making it your own is making it different. So what can you do to change what the photo is going to look like? What can you do with that scene? So have that in the back of your head. Again, you don't want to overthink things, but you do want to change things and see how you can change it and make it your own. And that means experimenting some and working it in a way to try to make it more. That's really your end goal is to take something interesting and make it more interesting in a photo. 
And now when it comes to working scenes of uncontrolled life where everything's moving, that's obviously not always easy because you can't control what's happening and you're having to do different things to help up your odds of capturing a photo that is interesting and getting everything in the right spot without having that control. And one way to help do that, and it's something I always do, is when you first see something interesting, but you want to make the scene more than just that initial interest, I keep that interest in my peripheral. I'm not, I'm not one track minded on it, but once I see it, I put it in my peripheral. So I'm always, you know, cognizant of what's happening right there, but then I'm scanning and looking the rest of the scene too. So I'm looking all around while I keep noticing what's happening here, because maybe there's going to be some good gesture there. Maybe there's something interesting that's going to happen and I'm going to want to take a photo of it right when that happens. So I'm always aware of that, but I'm looking to work the scene and see more. So as long as I have that in my peripheral, I have that one element where we're good. And so now I can work on the rest of it too. So really you're wanting to scan everything while still being aware of everything that's happening within that frame and a little bit outside the frame too, of course. So I'm constantly looking around. I know what's going on here in my peripheral, but I'm also watching what's happening over there. Then I look over there. Then I look over there. Maybe I notice something interesting now here. So now in my peripheral, I'm keeping... I'm keeping track of what's happening here and what's happening there. So it, it takes some practice and, and experience to get better at that. But the more you're able to be aware of happening in the scene, then the more you can look for more things and really work that scene. And then while you're scanning and having different pieces that you're aware of in your peripheral, then you're also working on predicting. I'm always trying to predict, especially when it comes to layers and you have people moving. I'm predicting, I'm watching their movements, I'm watching how fast they're moving, I'm scanning the whole scene so I know if someone's moving this way in, there's another person moving this way, and then I have another person here maybe moving that way, and then I have something in the foreground. So everything's starting to come together and there's interesting things happening too. Now it's about watching that and predicting when it's all going to come perfectly in the frame as much as it can without my control. So I'm timing it where I already know this person's moving this speed and so I know when they're going to be at that spot and I'm going to see if it's going to work out with the other elements when they're going to be in certain spots too. So it's a, it's a little bit, you know, you can't be perfect at it, but you definitely get better at it. I definitely have gotten better at predicting where people are going to be. Now, the worst part about that is it can all look like it's coming together and then you never know. Someone might decide to turn around. Maybe they forgot something that happens all the time. But it does help to predict a little bit because it ups your odds of getting that everything, the whole scene coming together and creating an interesting photo that works. Another thing is timing. You have to be quick and you have to notice things, especially when it comes to gesture, expression, any type of feeling or emotion that, that's coming from people's faces or interaction. You know, gesture and expression are the, are the big, big things you have to look for, but you have to have good timing. So not only when it's predicting when things are moving, but also have that timing for reaction when just things just happen. So be always ready and click the shutter right when you get the, the you could have someone pointing but if you get it right here it's obviously not going to really show until they get it like this that's just an obvious example but it's the same thing with expression you could have you could take a photo and it's happened to me many times where there's a fight or an argument and it looks like if you're there in person it looks very intense but then in the photo because the timing's off you can't even tell they're even arguing so you have to wait till you get the expressions where they're really showing their, their emotion in there. So you have to time it for that when maybe they're yelling and you, you time it so when their mouth's open and their eyes are wide open instead of right after and they close their mouth and then somebody looks at the photo that wasn't there, they won't know that they were arguing. So you have to look for the right timing for the gesture and the expression to really you know show that emotion and show what's happening in the scene. And when you are scanning and really working the scene, but you want to keep that candid nature of street photography, you're going to have to do it in a way that's not completely obvious or at least not distracting or it brings attention to you. Because, you know, if you're staring right at a person here and then staring right at a person there, it's going to be obvious. So that's another good thing about keeping the elements in your peripheral is because then they don't really notice that you're about to take a photo. So you want to just kind of be natural. You want to always be looking around. There's uh, you can watch a video of Wintergrand on YouTube, but you can see how he kind of works. And there's a lot of photographers that work in similar ways. They're just always kind of looking around, even though they have what they want to take a photo of in the peripheral and they're timing it, 
they don't really look like it. So then you don't disrupt the scene really. So I'm looking over here, looking over there, but I really know what's going on and then I take the photo. So you kind of always want to be looking around even if you don't need to because it keeps you just looking natural and then people aren't even really aware that you're working a scene, which then that can create a more candid and natural photo, which for me is what I'm always going for. I don't want it to look posed in any way. So look all around, but still keep focus of what's happening in your head the whole time. And then also, while you're working that scene and you're looking for the right composition, still trust your instincts too, because you don't want to miss something because you're too worried about composition. You know, sometimes composition doesn't always matter because... You could have, if a scene really works, if there's really a lot of interest happening, it doesn't need to be perfect composition. So you don't want to miss that because you're too worried about composing it. So if something really interesting happens, you know, something break, like a fight breaks out, it could be anything, someone falls, um, you know, you get that great expression, just anything, someone jumps, you know, anything that happens there, you want to be ready for that and take that shot. Also, if sometimes you just, you don't even know why. You're some, you see something interesting and you don't even know why at first. It's more subconscious feeling. Take the shot when you feel it because a lot of times I'll take a photo of something and there's something that I saw there, but I didn't really know what I saw. And then I look in the photo and you'll, you'll get that kind of, it might be a little, you know, strange feeling. There's something there though. So do trust your instincts. Again, it goes back to don't overthink. So when working scenes, of course you want composition to be important, but still trust your instincts when you feel it, see it, take it. And then there's a couple other things you can do that you know, little tricks you can do that can help up your odds too of working a scene where you can focus on other things too. One thing, of course, is finding a background that is interesting. So if you come upon a background, and this is very common, it can be a corner or it can be a wall or it can be something interesting going on in the background or the look of the background. So now that's a constant that you don't really have to worry about. So now you have to wait and look for something more to happen in front of it. But that's a that's probably one of the number one things people do, especially when they're starting out, is they look for something, a background that's interesting, and then they stand there and work it for a while, looking for something to happen. So I like to come upon scenes where there's something already happening because I move around a lot, but there are times where the background is so good that I, I think there's ways that I could have other things work with that background that I will work that scene there. So once you have the background, you have a constant that gives you one part of an interesting photo. So it ups your odds. Now you just have to have more happen though, but it's better than starting with nothing. And another thing you can do is you can have that good background, but also you can work with anchors. And what I mean by anchors, or maybe you have someone standing against a wall or you have someone sitting or you have someone really they're not going to be moving anywhere at least not anytime soon within the next minute or more so now you have an anchor there that you don't have to worry about anymore and it adds something to the scene so you could have an anchor here maybe you have more than one anchor you could have someone sitting here you could have someone doing something in the background standing there and so now you're looking for more elements to combine with that but it does up your odds because you start with a couple things of interest and now you just need a few more things or maybe even just one more thing but it gives you something more there so look for anchors that always helps. Now when it comes to working scenes and really all these tips and photography in general, it's also about shooting a lot. That's one of the number one ways that you get better is just experience. The more you see, the more you know, and that's really something you have to do for working scenes is you just get out there and work scenes as much as you can and you're going to improve on them. And a lot of things that I mentioned, they're going to come more naturally. So you don't have the problem of overthinking because it just comes just naturally. You've, you've worked scenes like that, that before and you see things and you take photos of them without really thinking about it. You, a lot of times, even with instinctual shots, your composition will improve with time without thinking about it. Having a unique eye and talent is very important, but experience can help a lot. It goes a long way. I, pretty much every photographer was much worse at the start and they wouldn't even, I know I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to show my pictures I was first taking, but you need to get through those bad pictures to get to the better pictures. So just go out there and shoot a lot, work a lot of scenes. And for my last tip on working scenes, don't force it. If you're not feeling it, move on. You might come upon what looks like a perfect background or a perfect scene, but if you're just not feeling it, if you're just not finding anything really happening, interesting in a photo, you don't have to 
to stay out there and waste your whole day just trying to get it. And you also probably will start getting frustrated when you're trying to force it. And when you force something or you try to, you're probably not going to get anything. It's going to backfire. So if you're not feeling it, just move on. Maybe come back another day, but find something more interesting that you are feeling. So I think that's already been more than a good number of tips on working scenes in photography. I wrote down 17, so that's a lot, but there are more too. So if you have any you'd like to share, write a comment below. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next video. Cheers.